Okay. Thank you, folks. Uh, we have a room full of people here. Our Honorable uh, CG, Dr. Nagendra Prasadji, is here. Um, along with them, we have uh, Nilesh Shah and uh, also um, Aditya Modani in person. We have uh, um, a room full of people. We're about to get started. Thanks again for joining from India. Um, Sandeep Shah, General Manager, Kip City. Um, Anupam Verma, Chief Executive, IBU, Gift City, and Global Head, IF, uh, IG at ICICI Bank. Ashitor Sharma, General Manager, International Financial Services Center Authority, IFSCA. Suresh Swami, Partner, PwC, LG India. And uh, Aditya Madani, who's here, India Tax Desk at, uh, in US, uh, Ernst Young LLP. Uh, of course, our own Nilesh Shah, Chartered Accountant, is here, Joint Secretary. We also have Suda Michael, uh, the Acting Chairman of the San Francisco Chapter of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. I am Vish Arunacharam, I am Chartered Accountant, Founder Chairman of the ICA San Francisco Chapter. Folks, we are very excited to have all of you here. Again, one other again, uh, apologies about the technical glitches. We've sorted it out. Uh, people are able to do here from India. Um, so, we are very glad to see the CGI support team and uh, our own Dr. TV Dr. Pisaji today. Um, we were shocked to see the um, attacks a couple of days ago. We are very, very glad that they are all safe. We want to show our solidarity. ICA San Francisco, we work extensively with our CGI's office. So, uh, we are very excited about this. Uh, so, we do uh, regularly move to the CGI's office. We are here to talk about the investment opportunities in India. Um, this was uh, originally supposed to have been with the, uh, Mr. Anurag Jain, Secretary TPIIT, but uh, we had to switch it. This was a planned event, actually. This Gift City event was planned originally, and then we switched it to the other event. This was supposed to be put to April, but I'm glad we are able to do it today. Uh, fabulous topic. Um, I was uh, recently in India, uh, late December, early Jan. So I have witnessed myself the transformation that is uh, happening back in India. I was uh, with the uh, folks at Vigyan Bhavan, Panichya Bhavan, Nukyog Bhavan. I met with the Invest India folks. I met with the head of the startup uh, India movement, uh, um, Asta Grover. I met with uh, the CEO of ONDC, uh, Mr. Koshi. Uh, quite a few executives, quite a few um, bureaucrats um, who are at the helm back in India. This is something phenomenal that's happening back in India. It's a very apt topic for the evening. So uh, without any further ado, I want to give a few more very short updates about where we are by ICS San Francisco, and then I'll hand over to the next uh, speaker. So uh, ICA San Francisco, we uh, when we launched our chapter in 2017, we were the only active chapter in this part of the world. Since then, we've uh, incubated about 16 offices across the country in the USA. Um, and then the next one that's going to be launched is um, the ICA Arizona chapter is going to be launched out of New York um, on the 31st of this month. Uh, our ICA president, Mr. Anike Talati, is here in the USA. Um, he will be launching a chapter out of New York. And uh, we have the chief guest as uh, Sri Randir Jaiswal, the Council General of India, New York. We are proud to say that ICA is there in each of these seven locations where our Indian mission is uh, in the USA. And then um, ICA Seattle chapter is coming. We are launching that in April. They've been approved as a chapter. So they will be the 19th office. Um, I'm sorry, the uh, 9th chapter, 8th being Arizona, 9th is a Seattle office. Our vision for ICA USA is we aim to create economic opportunity for every member of the US based CA workforce. And we plan to have at least one ICA office for each of the 50 states in the USA. Uh, we're getting there. We are at 17. Very soon, we'll be in 23. Six more offices are coming in the next quarter. So here, you see the list of offices. Um, Toronto and Vancouver are the two in uh, Canada, but uh, the rest are all in the USA. The ones in green are the uh, representative offices, which are virtual offices. The ones on the left-hand side, um, Chicago, um, Dallas, Houston, New England, New York, San Francisco, Washington. Those are the existing chapters, the seven chapters. Arizona and Seattle will be joining them very soon, and then followed by Ohio. So we all have some uh, red boxes coming in Philadelphia and San Diego. Uh, we are growing leaps and bounds in the USA, and then, uh, I did mention Ohio and Arizona. Thing. So uh, with uh, that, the next event, the chapter is in April. 
Earth Day is being celebrated. Uh, this is the second time, second year, consecutive year, we're working with ACT Foundation. So that is at ICT Community Center in uh, Lake Peters. So do join us for uh, uh, the second consecutive year. So, uh, and I would like to thank all the sponsors in the room. We're going to honor them at the end of this evening. Um, Aisar Rangar, Sanjeev Gupta, CPA, Ananda Bowen, Aprat, Ashwal, and Co. Shub, Idea Helix, um, Bhatia and Co. ICC Bank, City National Bank. Very soon, um, we're going to have a State Bank of India join us in the next event. I'm sure they're going to be one of our sponsors. With that, I'll hand it over to Nilesh uh, for the evening. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Nilesh, uh, for a wonderful introduction. Before we start the panel, I would like to invite our Honorable Council General to make some opening remarks. Uh, good evening and Namaskar, everyone. Uh, actually, this particular event was to be with uh, uh, Secretary DPIIT, uh, Mr. Anurag Jay. We got to know uh, many people here. We have several uh, queries on uh, reforms, etc. And we thought of having that particular uh, uh, session here. Uh, but I see all the stars here, you know, Anikaji, Kantai, Sandra Nandini, and then Priya, Ram Redikaru, and uh, several others. You now, Vyasi, Mother Vetra, Mohishi, my people who competition for Anurag Jain on uh, semiconductors and technology, etc. Thank you very much for making the uh, uh, time, uh, taking time to come uh, this evening to this occasion, uh, despite the fact that it's the middle of the week and um, an evening. Um, uh, actually, uh, we have been doing several events with ICAI. Uh, thanks to them, they have been expanding. I thought always, you know, chartered accountants are a very, very helpful uh, um, group. So we have been entertaining them. And uh, many people come up with you know, several tax issues, bringing out the money, taking money inside, and then the challenges. So uh, we thought uh, we have to engage with them, and then we have to use their expertise uh, to just quell some uh, uh, disinformation or misinformation which is there. Uh, as you all know, uh, India uh, growth is no, I did not tell every one of you are aware, and then. Uh, uh, it's everywhere in the media. We are the largest uh, economy which is going to be at fastest rate. Uh, that is almost seven percent uh, despite COVID, despite uh, economic, economic slowdown all over the globe. And uh, not only that, uh, uh, we are uh, making the use of this young population, which is uh, you know at the mean age is twenty-seven or so in India. Uh, so. Uh, with these uh, you know, um, parameters, uh, with the uh, huge human resource pool, uh, we are looking at uh, uh, taking the global uh, uh, global economy, you know, driving the global economy. Uh, you saw, you know, if India you know, decides you know, they can achieve something, which we have demonstrated through vaccine. Uh, no one thought you know, a, billion a billion plus population can get vaccinated so quickly and then come over the pandemic, or over from the pandemic. So uh, that is the kind of uh, uh, resolve we have, if we think, and uh, uh, all the vaccines we produce, and I think we are the only country who have exported vaccines to over 100 countries. Uh, not only exported, we have supplied, we also. Um, everyone talks about climate change and energy, and uh, we have seen recently that uh, the government of India has come up with an initiative of two billion um, dollars uh, uh, initiative for promoting green hydrogen. Uh, so uh, basically, you know, a lot of R and D. Earlier, the you know, if you take pharmaceuticals, India is known as no good user of genetic drugs, not much into R and D, etc. But we are uh, in the initial period itself, we are coming up with uh, uh, no R and D and also driving green hydrogen. Uh, economy, uh, and I'm happy to mention that not only that incentive, but uh, we came up with several productivity incentive schemes for uh, electronics. You saw that one helping us in uh, getting some iPhones manufactured in India. I think we already manufactured 30 percent of iPhone 14s, and then we are looking at some more uh, adding capacity in electronics, other electronics also. 
semi-conductors, you know, I must say this valley is the, uh, I can say, you know, mother uh, of that particular industry. Uh, I was just reading the chip wars, you know, book, you know, everything happened from this particular uh, valley. So, uh, we have taken guidance uh, from uh, the experts uh, in the area. Uh, and uh, we have come up with a productivity incentive scheme for semiconductors. Of course, many experts still say that you know only India is ready for uh, design and packaging and testing, etc. Not app center, uh, but you know the kind of infrastructure which is growing. Uh, other day you saw the transport, you know, uh, the improvement in transport, road transport particularly. Uh, you have inaugurated the, you know, the big uh, uh, corridors between Bombay, Delhi, and then uh, Chandigarh to other places. So what we are looking at, even railways, you saw the you know, addition of our own indigenously made uh, uh, railway wagons, uh, railway coaches, Vande Mataram Express, etc. Which are really going to reduce the time taken by uh, the passengers to travel between the cities, etc. That also, you know, uh, we are looking at sustainable uh, transport system all over India. We are looking at uh, EVs, and uh, I don't know, you know, there is a lot of progress. You, know, you can look at uh, scooters or you know, uh, the, the cars, etc. It's on increase, but not as much uh, it happens. Here in North Seattle or uh, California. But we are looking at that. Um, see, the, the digital economy, I need not tell you, I think we are the leader, I can say, uh, because uh, uh, the last year, whatever digital transactions were conducted, uh, we were the leader number one. Uh, even now, we were over, over China and then USA. Uh, we are looking at this, this digital economy to grow to 1 trillion by. 2025. You know, that is a fast pace. Um, and uh, on the trade and exports, uh, I must tell you, we have hit the record of 400 billion last year. Because of uh, the economy slowdown, etc., we thought this will go down. But I'm happy to share with you in February, uh, we crossed uh, merchandise export 409 billion. So we are uh, good at, but no, that has been. Uh, we thought of more increase, but that has been made up by service export. There was a significant increase in service export. Uh, so we crossed around 685 billion trade. We are looking at uh, getting to 1 trillion trade uh, in uh, 2025 uh, as uh, we celebrated and celebrating Amrit Mahal. So we are entered, we have entered Amrit Khan. That is what um, Prime Minister says, and this 25 years is a turning point in our uh, in our destiny. So we are looking at this 25 years to be put to good use uh, to become the leader. Uh, and uh, several estimates indicate that we will be a uh, economy of 34 trillion by 2047. That is when the number of in India 800. Uh, I, I think now uh, with this. Uh, Words. I also want to say the gift city concept has come and a lot of push on that. Uh, I think you know, some people call it Mauritius in India, uh, or there's you no know, many. Even I, I went to a university, they were asking about having some university. In city. So uh, that, is, that is so attractive about the taxes or about the infrastructure. You, know, you look at the infrastructure, whatever a smart city can provide, uh, it is there. So we are looking at promoting that gift city. There are many uh, uh, misgivings also, or there are several suggestions also made to make gift city very, very attractive. Uh, that is where we came up with this idea of having this city uh, being discussed with all the leaders in Bay Area. Uh, that is where the ICAI and then the Emirate Consulate, of the Consulate uh, came into uh, uh, a discussion to have a uh, session on Cape City. I'm happy that no, uh, many stalwarts are here. You are welcome to give suggestions uh, and then we'll be happy uh, to take them. Uh, we had uh, some disturbances at the uh, consulate. Uh, we have uh, taken up that and uh, it is not the majority, it's a minority. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, violence has no place in a democracy and uh, 
the uh, state government and, and city and at the federal level, we have received a lot of uh, support. Uh, I must say that. And then I received you know, many messages from many of you expressing concern. Thank you very much. Uh, we know that uh, you are because, and uh, we only you know here represent India uh, in this country and as David Diploma does. And then we look forward to your support. Uh, of course, no one of your support. Uh, once again, uh, thank you very much for uh, taking time to come this evening and, and uh, I request a uh, uh, wish and needage to take forward uh, to make some uh, uh, interesting comments or you know, to take forward the Keep City concept in India. Thank you very much once again, Jack. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Prasad, for the wonderful opening remarks. Uh, and uh, on behalf of the San Francisco chapter, we would like to once again express what and sort of energy, uh, and, and then we attack the uh, With this, before we start the panel, I would request uh, Mr. Anupam Varma, CEO, IPO City ICSA Bank, to start with opening remarks. Uh, over to you, Anupam. Anupam, can you hear us? Uh, thank you and good evening to all of you. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Loud and clear. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the time. Um, what um, I will do is in a couple of slides, broadly talking about two themes. One, uh, what is Gift City and what is the op opportunity for banks in Gift City? So I'm giving the banker's perspective on, on what are the opportunities in terms of uh, different areas. Um, and then, you know, uh, uh, we'll have, uh, you know, a panel discussion um, on a on couple of other uh, more nuanced opportunities. Uh, as, you know, just, just to, um, Karthi can take to the first slide. Uh, yeah. Um, the slide is not visible to me, Karthik, fully. Uh, now it is, now it is. Um, I think the concept of Gift City uh, was was kind of conceptualized within, with the thought process about onshoring the offshore. Uh, if, you know, it was the, it is the first financial services center, which is envisaged in India, uh, ably supported and developed by the government of Gujarat uh, with the help of government government of India. It is located about 20 minutes from Ahmedabad um, uh, airport. Um, and if you look at from the bank's perspective, uh, the, the thought process is that banks in Gift City should be able to do all the dollar businesses for all their clients across the globe, as well as in India. Uh, what they were earlier doing from centers like London, Singapore, Dubai. Um, so, so net net with the concept of onshoring the offshore banking services uh, for you know foreign currency banking um, so banks can deal in foreign currency uh, they do not deal in inr uh, and from the foreign exchange perspective um, gift city is akin to a foreign resident uh, or, or, or rather non resident uh, from the FEMA perspective uh, next slide yeah uh, you know we also talked about it ITES uh, so we we'll, I'll give you a little overview uh, so gift city is about you know it's about 2400 acre space now which is divided between the international zone and the domestic zone International zone is like a banking or financial services, SEZ, where I mentioned uh, banks can carry out all the international businesses. If you look at the financial services lands landscape in Gift City, it hovers across the entire spectrum from, from banking. There, uh, there are you know, 20 plus Indian and foreign banks which are present there. Uh, there's a you know exchange, uh, which is the dollar exchange, which is there for both equity and debt products. Uh, there's a bullion exchange, which is, we just gone, got, got launched a couple of months back. There's an international trade finance platform, which is in, in the sandbox stage, where for cross-border trade, 
um, invoice discounting can be done. There's a very vibrant fintech ecosystem which is getting developed uh, for fintechs to look at areas like cross-border trade, cross-border payments, as well as leveraging Gift City as a as a gateway to India for international fintechs, as well as gateway to the world for Indian fintechs looking at uh, you know accessing the global markets. We are finance companies which are non-banking financial services across asset le- you know asset financing, whether it's ship leasing or or um, aircraft uh, uh, funding companies or another area which is uh, where you know we had the first uh, company being set up is the dollar financing for students who are going overseas uh, another area which is being uh, developed is the global in-house centers uh, which is the global capability centers of of global agencies uh, where us is the biggest uh, you know uh, headquarter companies for all, all of them to set up their capability centers in India and Gift City is again coming as a very promising uh, area within that. Insurance and reinsurance for again um, cross border uh, insurance products being provided by um, Indian insurance companies like I say, say Lombard uh, and, and so on and so forth. Corporate treasury centers where uh, Indian MNCs can look at creating their global treasury centers, which erstwhile have been there in, in London, Singapore, Dubai, for pooling of funds, for investing of funds, uh, for doing the entire risk management and the fundraising. Uh, and if you look at the regulatory landscape, uh, you know, we have a unified regulator, IFSCA, regulating the entire spectrum from banking to all these areas which I mentioned. Uh, like in, in India, we have RBI, for banking, IRIDA for insurance, SEBI for capital markets, and so on and so forth. In Gift City, we have a unified regulator looking at the entire spectrum. Uh, next slide. I, I, I briefly covered it, but just to kind of uh, uh, double click on each of these areas, stock exchanges can deal in dollar denominated products uh, where, we, where you know we expect more and more Indian issuers looking at uh, listing um, dollar debt and and in the future dollar equity. Um, We already have, uh, you know, daily volume, which is crossing almost 25 billion um, on the stock exchanges. IFSC units, which is the banking units I talked about. There are 23, um, you know, bank branches among Indian banks, both private sector banks and public sector banks, as well as uh, foreign banks. And the banking assets are growing uh, very fast and currently stand at about $35 um, billion. Uh, it's becoming a hub for um, AIFs, both inbound uh, as well as outbound. Um, you know, earlier, a lot of funds in, across different asset classes, whether it's private equity, venture capital, and so on and so forth, they used to set up vehicles in Mauritius for investing in India. But increasingly, we are seeing these vehicles being set up in Gift City for investing in India. Uh, and on the other side, uh, outbound, you know, a lot of asset managers who are looking at accessing international products for their domestic um, wealth customers, those uh, vehicles and companies are being set up in Gift City. Already we have 37 funds who have uh, set up with a committed amount of about $4.6 billion. Uh, broking services uh, is another area, you know, the, with the um, SGX Nifty uh, getting operational and shifting to Gift City this year, we will see uh, a lot of um, uh, you know interest from the broking community. Also, we already have fifty plus brokers who have set up their uh, offices there, um, and the entire ancillary uh, system uh, is come up for financial services with uh, with capital market ancillary uh, law firms and so on and so forth. IT, ITS, another area which uh, I'm sure our panelists cover, will cover in more detail, uh, how um, Gujarat is focusing on the IT, IT, ITS in a big way. Uh, next slide. Uh, how we are envisaging uh, Gift City, in, and, and this is how uh, a lot of other banks are looking at it. I think, you know, um, it, it's a hub for doing dollar banking for our clients in India, back in India, uh, you know, uh, corporates, uh, funds, and so on and so forth uh, for their dollar banking, as well as 
they are overseas entities and the entities could be based anywhere in the world but the entire global banking or dollar banking can happen in gift city uh, so that's how we are looking at um, you know, the the gift city franchise uh, and the the areas where the opportunities are there from the banking perspective is is the corporate ecosystem capital market a uh, global markets startup ecosystem and the nri services on the on the corporate uh, next next slide uh, kartik uh, i'll i'll start with the startup ecosystem these are products which are available for uh, you know holding companies of indian startups uh, as well as the subsidiaries of indian startups who are present overseas you know they can open a current account uh, or, you know working capital Uh, foreign currency deposits, FDI services, escrow services, uh, transaction banking, uh, you know, um, for the cross-border remittances and so on and so forth. As I mentioned, the the um, holding company or or the subsidiary or the JV of that startup could be anywhere in the world, but entire global banking can happen uh, from Gift City. Uh, next slide. yeah uh, as far as the funds are concerned uh, as i mentioned uh, uh, it's becoming a very um, you know attractive destinations for funds being set up uh, in gift city both for inbound and outbound investment and we believe that uh, in over uh, over next couple of years we'll also see the entire security market in gift city developing so that will also be a big plus for funds to set up to uh, invest in the securities um, in india link dollar securities Uh, which would be available uh, in gift city uh, there are multiple you know benefits why the funds are um, are uh, set uh, setting up in uh, gift city um, you know there are there are benefit in terms of the the setup cost operating cost there are benefits around um, you know the the leverage which is which is allowed allowed there there are benefits around the um, the co- concentration risk and other and other uh, um regulations which are there for funds to invest in india uh, like relaxation and diversification norms uh, their co- co investment opportunities and so on and so forth uh, as a result we as we are seeing venture capital funds um, uh, as well as uh, uh, you know wealth uh, funds who are focusing on on uh, high net worth individuals being being uh, set up um in terms of incentives there are tax incentives uh, you know which are there we can send you the details later there are operational benefit in terms of the setup cost as well as uh, running cost uh, and and there there are uh, you know tax benefit in terms of the tax holiday for fund managers for 10 years out of the 15 year um, uh, window uh, next slide uh corporate banking the entire spectrum of dollar products uh, can be offered uh, from from gift city by by different banks uh, ecbs foreign currency term loans uh, you know foreign currency working capital lcs sblcs uh, foreign currency accounts cross border trades uh, and trade finance both for lc back trade as well as open account trade uh, global market products uh, remittances um hedging products like interested swap cross currency swap ndf ndois um uh, for the offshore uh, markets fdi services as well as the escrow services next slide yeah uh, so that's that's uh, you know a very very uh, broad overview uh, in, in the interest of time i thought i spend more time about uh, the theme on what are the opportunities and how different banks in gift city are looking at uh, global banking opportunities uh, in gift city and as i mentioned uh, how banks are envisaging is that the customer could be in india customer could be anywhere in the world but the entire global banking dollar banking which used to happen earlier in different um, you know financial centers could now happen at one place at a very very competitive cost structure uh, which is the rupee cost structure and even even banks have a Uh, tax holiday uh, since they are operating in that zone thank you
Thank you, Anupam. Uh, I know you are on a holiday and I know you are in London and it's two o'clock there. So we really appreciate you taking this time, accepting our invite and sharing so much. Uh, I'm really impressed. Uh, I wouldn't be so alert at two o'clock in the night. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great uh, rest of the evening. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. From the audience, uh, we will come back to you and uh, maybe keep it offline on the email. Uh, if you want to hit the sack, uh, I totally understand at this stage. Uh, with this, uh, I jump onto the panel. Uh, we, have, we are lucky we have a power pack panel today with us. Uh, we have Sandeep uh, from the Gibbs City. We have Ashutosh from the Regulatory Authority. And then we have Suresh and Aditya from the consultant side. I think it's a perfect and you know, it's going to be uh, interactive. Uh, I'm going to put questions to individual panelists, but I request each one of you to share uh, your views uh, for a question, even if it's not posed to you. That way, it will remain uh, completely free to uh, As far as the audience is concerned, I would request you to hold on to your questions to the end of the panel, uh, and then we can collect all the questions and ask them, especially since we are in a little bit uh, less of time. Uh, without much ado, I'll jump in my questions uh, right away, and we'll start with Sandeep. Uh, Sandeep, uh, I know you've been an integral part of the Grip City Initiative uh, right from the early days in 2015. Uh, so for the benefit of all of us who may be hearing Grip City for the first time, can you give us a historical perspective of the Grip City Initiative? Hi, I'm not sure whether we have been disconnected. Can you hear us? I can hear you, Sandeep. Yeah, I think it seems we three are on the screen. I have lost the screen of the venue there. Yeah, me too. I can see them back in. Yeah. Hi, good, good evening. Can you hear us? Hi, am I audible now? Uh, you, the admin at ICSA, you are on mute right now. Can you hear me? Can you check? Yes, I can hear you, Sandeep. Okay, thank you, thank you. No, great, I think it's my... Uh, pleasure to be a part of this uh, uh, event uh, and uh, you know I think it's you rightly mentioned all of you must be reading and hearing about Gibbs City and um, must be wondering what's happening you know sometimes news may come about fintech setting up an entity there or sometimes you will see the university setting up in Gibbs City and you may be wondering you know what's what is Gibbs City and how it is coming up so it's let me take a couple of minutes to give you a perspective how it all started and where we are right now in terms of the overall development. Uh, so Gip City, uh, it's it's a very simple concept and it started with an objective to create global financial and IT services hub. What we wanted to do and what is the intention of Government of India is to create inbound and outbound gateway for the financial and IT services uh, operations. And that's where if you look at uh, the structure of Gibbs City, uh, it's a greenfield smart city. And when I say greenfield smart city, the benefit of developing the smart city was that, you know, we can actually experiment in terms of the infrastructure facilities that we have created. More from the geographical location perspective, the city is located closer to the Ahmedabad International and Domestic Airport. It's only 20 minutes drive from the uh, the commercial city of the state and it's much closer to the Gandhi Nagar which is the capital uh, state capital uh, of the Gujarat uh, it's the city is being developed under a thousand acre of land and uh, uh, idea is to create integrated city development uh, for the financial which can cater to the financial and IT services operations uh, if you look at India's demand for the international financial services and there was a study as well which says that india actually needs 50 billion dollar of international financial services every year 
and this number can actually go up to 125 billion dollar if india does not develop the international financial center in 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 in, in the country and i think that was the trigger of, uh, of developing the international financial services center gift uh, uh, you know at gujarat uh, uh, in the year 2015 was notified as the international financial services center i think this is very important and very interesting uh, mainly for for nri community overseas mainly for the financial services companies operating overseas because many a times what happen whenever you want to access india because of the capital account restrictions of the rbi under the fema regulations it becomes very difficult for you to access open the accounts to invest in india there are certain certain restrictions under the foreign exchange management regulations however with the growing demand of the financial services activities it was kind of a need for the country to create kind of an enclave where all such financial services activities which are in non rupee nature which are in dollars in nature can be provided within the uh, geographical uh, boundary of the country and that's where the concept of you know ifsc came uh, and 2015 was the year when the international financial center started op operating when we were developing ifsc we actually focused on three uh, rather four critical aspects one was the infrastructure part i think we what we wanted that when we are trying to attract the global financial players it is important that the infrastructure facility facilities that we develop are at par with the other global financial centers so i think and and at the same time we had greenfield project and we we, we had kind of an opportunity to experiment in in the facilities that we can create and today i mean you know, we are proud to say that the infrastructure part is something which is the most interesting part and uh, uh, you know people are enjoying and and are having this different experience from the normal cities generally the second uh, important factor that we kept in mind that the regulation should be also at par with the other leading financial centers i think the uh, the ease of doing business is very much important in in, in today's world and I, and the regulations are going to play a very important role mainly in the financial services sector the third part was also on the taxation part i think uh, while tax incentives are important but at the same time it is also important that there is a tax clarity on the businesses that they perform from gift and that's where i think the it, it uh, government of india uh, has provided a very clear tax regime and has very clearly articulated in terms of the applicability of the taxes for various transactions that happens from gift city and uh, you know that has provided confidence to the foreign investors today to access the uh, uh, indian market through the gift ifsc and the fourth and the last again very important factor uh, uh, which we kept in mind was the dispute resolution mechanism uh, the we have uh, the office of singapore international arbitration center at gift where the companies can actually use arbitration uh, uh, as a part of the dispute resolution mechanism so i think if you look at the overall uh, you know journey of last 7 to 8 eight years the, the the pcs in terms of infrastructure in terms of the regulation tax the dispute resolution there those all have been covered very well and the foundation has been kind of made very strong to now cater to the international financial services activities in the zone thank you Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, it's great to hear from your side, given that you've you know, seen the whole journey. And uh, thanks for explaining about the infrastructure and the taxation regime. I'll come back to you with some follow-up questions, but I want to move on to Ashutosh at this stage. Um, Ashutosh, you've been a banker, and now you've made a move to the regulatory body. Can you share your perspective and add color to the story that Sandeep just gave us? As to how you know what are, what do you think are the main lessons which would be relevant for the Silicon Valley audience uh, from your journey's perspective? Over to you, Ashutosh, and thank you for accepting our invite. Thanks. Um, thanks to ICI Chapter San Francisco. Thanks to Mr. Prasad. Thanks to ICC Bank for organizing this. 
See, I think uh, uh, while I've been a banker and currently I'm working in a regulator, but uh, IFSCA uh, is a regulator uh, with a very different uh, DNA compared to uh, typical regulators, financial regulators you see. If you see the charter of IFSCA, IFSCA is responsible for both regulation as well as development of uh, this financial services center. So at one side, uh, we are uh, trying to understand from the industry uh, how we should globally benchmark. As Sandeep mentioned, uh, at IFSC, we are looking at four or five key things. We looked at uh, uh, how to bring world-class uh, regulations, the regime. For each vertical, we try to understand the industry globally and try to identify the best tune it as per the IFSC perspective and bring it out. It uh, requires a lot of engagement uh, with the industry. All the regulations in IFSC, when we release, we uh, first issue those regulations for industry discussions. Second focus uh, that we have is uh, we have to bring a lot of ease of doing business. So right away from the way you are uh, sending in applications, handholding before that, to the way once you establish understanding from the industry, what else is required to be done to make you successful in IFSC? This is uh, also faulty domain in IFSCA. At the same time, when you're developing this zone, we are looking at establishing very strong uh, global connects. We are engaging with the uh, association industries as well as the regulator globally. And uh, we have already signed uh, MOUs with the likes of Luxembourg, Sweden, uh, Qatar is work in progress, Singapore, and a lot of these MOUs have been executed, means transitions have been done beyond that. While we are looking at that, uh, I think there are three, uh, three uh, key areas which we are aiming at. As Sandeep mentioned and Anupam mentioned, we are trying to onshore the offshore. We are saying that we have to bring all the financial services that belong to India which has gone out, we have to bring all of that into India. What it requires is that uh, we have to continuously understand almost to the extent of being paranoid to understand what part India is missing out. And it requires a lot of industry analysis and a lot of innovation. And I'm thinking innovation when you say, I'm saying innovation, uh, uh, you say financial innovation, you say regulatory innovation. And I say that even if you think that a financial regulator in India is uh, not only enabling the core financial uh, services, but now it is also enabling, for example, as Mr. Prasad mentioned, it's enabling universities in IFSC. So by making it a financial product, we are looking at ship leasing, we are looking at aircraft leasing, we are looking at ancillary services, uh, and we are bringing all of these ecosystem into IFSC. See, while we are bringing uh, these ecosystem, there are three main ambitions that we intend to do. One certainly is to bring what is rightly India's. And I can see all the CAs in the room. Uh, ICI has been very strong. India's financial uh, ecosystem is very strong. It's present globally. But they are servicing India from outside. And they are going out for some reason. This requires a lot of perspective from the industry to understand why they have gone out whether it's taxation, whether it's regulation, whether it's ease of doing business, all of these elements is something that within IFSCA, we are trying to understand and engage. So onshore or the offshore will be the first thing that we are trying to do. However, as Mr. Prasad rightly mentioned, today India is uh, one of the biggest or rather leader in climate initiatives. You have SDG goals, 2030, 2070. If you look at that, in 2070, that kind of financial uh, investment required, some numbers around 8, 9, 10 trillion dollars, of which we require import of financial uh, investments to the tune of 4, 4.5 trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. IFSC is trying to become that bridge between the global capital and uh, India. For that, we need to understand the industry dynamics. We have to connect with the investors from the industry. We need to, uh, it requires not only a regulatory rigor, it actually requires a lot of uh, industry rigor. You know, understand, empathize, understand both sides of things. And third thing which certainly we intend to do, we always say that we are looking at uh, IFSC, we are trying to bring industry into India. 
But uh, mark my word, when we look okay. at the regulation, when we look at the reg taxation regime, we are very yeah. conscious that this is a time where yeah. India has an opportunity to bring an international financial center. And we are not making this international financial center only for India. Certainly the orientation is India and okay. how we can bring it uh, more efficiently towards India. But we are saying that it should become a regional center. It should become global financial center. So in a way, in Malaysia, as you see, uh, I think what it requires, it's a certainly a national project of very different scale of national and international impact. But what it requires uh, is that it requires uh, we, us to interact with the industry a lot so that we bring out the best. We listen not only when forming the regulation, we listen to the industry even subsequent to that. So I think but if you ask me as a banker, you, I'm coming back to your question, but uh, as a banker, see, all we used to do is we try to understand the markets. We try to understand how to bring efficiency in the flow of funds in the for our customers. Here, I think I just operate at the first principle and I say that we are operating in a way problem statements are much bigger. The scales are much uh, higher. The impact is much more. And data, at times, data is not available. So it's a very... Uh, uh, unstructured environment in terms of how data is available, not available. We have to take calls, but uh, it's very first principle approach. Uh, keep it very simple. Engage, empathize, and uh, continue to deliver. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Yes, absolutely, Ashutosh. Thanks for the detailed answer. And uh, I, I do believe that you know people like you bring up a fresh perspective to the regulatory authorities, uh, I'm going back to your your thinking uh, is more of solving problems rather than uh, creating things of what you cannot do. And in many ways, uh, your stake as a banker with uh, ICICI Bank has been uh, at the core of uh, being a problem solver than actually being uh, somebody who just keeps on saying this is what you can or cannot do. I know we also have Suresh and Aditya on the panel, and I will come to them. Uh, they are the experts on the consulting side. But I have one question for you both, Sandeep uh, and Ashutosh. Uh, you know, how, how can you contribute to the Silicon Valley community in terms of information and engagement? Uh, will we be having you here anytime soon, or do you have a team here? Uh, some, some flavor of how engagement can happen uh, to both of you. Uh, you can choose to respond on that uh, one by one uh, before I give it to the consultants. Maybe Ashutosh, you can start first and then see Sandeep. Thank you. I think, uh, yes, uh, we, uh, while we initiated, uh, IFSC got initiated in the middle of COVID. Once it got over, we started going out and uh, IFSC did uh, send across a a big delegation to us i think uh, sandeep was also part of it uh, but i think uh, probably we missed out on the bay area at that time because we uh, were more in uh, dc and new york and uh, where we met the funds we met the exchanges we met uh, some of the universities we met a lot of startups and fintech uh, we intend to continue this initiative of going out to the industry and engaging with them. And this uh, uh, webinar or this uh, event is very, very helpful. I heard that you have 16 chapters. See, if you look at uh, what is happening in India, investments in industries, core, whether it's funds, uh, non-core, whether you think of GCC, Global Capability Center. Now, today, India has more than 1,500 Global Capability Centers, of which 60% uh, are coming from USA. And I think uh, visit in person or uh, virtually, both will play a critical role in enabling and uh, tapping into your network to uh, reach out to this industry. Thank you, Ashutosh. Sandi, how would you make yourself accessible there? Yeah. So basically, I think uh, you know what we have been now uh, telling whenever we visit in some of the global financial centers that the it is now very important for the Indian communities operating there to create kind of a dedicated chapter 
on the IFSC because now you know if you look at the India as a entire country it has now two jurisdictions one a domestic financial center you know which is very vibrant and growing very fast now the second uh, center is the international center where you know you have you can set up the offshore funds the offshore fintech firms can be set up the reinsurance companies can set up so it's a very wide and broad uh, umbrella uh, you know within the IFSC so there can be two or three ways to look at it one within the you know i say uh, your the institute of chartered accountants chapters in us if you can actually set up the center of excellence for ifsc in one of your chapter and as the gibb city and ifsc will be more than happy to provide you know right kind of data information and a single point of contact thing to 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 cater to the uh, the requirements of the you know ifs related information in in us community and uh, you know I, I, on regular basis basically such uh, webinars can be organized on a particular topics where you know where we one day we will identify the fintech the second day we can identify the other topic and the relevant community members can join and understand how as a fintech company they can be a part of the city region and probably uh, you know we have a right kind of stakeholders with us so who can help in terms of understanding the taxation regime the regulatory regime the legal aspects of it but i think we need to create that bridge between you know the through the icai and uh, at gap city so that the information flow can happen uh, uh, seamlessly yeah that's a fantastic idea sandeep by the center of excellence being a point of contact at least for the chartered accountant community which you know is spread over all over the us and i'm sure if you look at our member base uh, someone or the other must be working in almost all the major financial institutions uh, even small international funds as well so in that sense uh, using the cn network is, is a great idea i pick it up uh, uh, and that's 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 something which uh, is action point for the future at this stage, uh, you know, I'll pause with you and uh, Ashutosh. Uh, I'll just make a comment to the audience that you're lucky to have both of them, Sandeep and Ashutosh, uh, between the two of them. They really are driving the Gibbs City initiative uh, in terms of you know, concept and execution. Uh, we'll come back to you with more questions at, during the end of the panel. But at this stage, now the time is to bring in Suresh and Aditya. Uh, the consultants here, or the people to whom the funds here will reach out to uh, when they want something done. Uh, Suresh, uh, I'll start with you, but Aditya, when you can respond to this question. So, what is the consultant's perspective on leveraging the Gibbs City Initiative? And more specifically, how can venture capital funds based in Silicon Valley utilize the Gibbs City framework? I know Anupam did talk about a little bit there, but maybe you can talk about you know the go-to-market strategy and the specifics. First you Suresh and then you are. Suresh, over sure. to you. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. You are absolutely audible. Now okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you to the San Francisco chapter of ICI for giving me this opportunity to speak to all of you. My name is Suresh Swami. I'm the partner at Pricebot House, and I am based out of Gift City. Uh, so firstly, let me start with talking about Gift City. And again, this is uh, something which the Prime Minister has also mentioned in um, a couple of his speeches. The very special feature of Gift City is that it is the main pillar of the Tri-City approach. So you have three cities here, Ahmedabad, Gandhinagar, and Gift City. All of, all of them are like 30 minutes away from one another. Uh, all of them have their own special identity. Ahmedabad boasts of glorious history. Gandhinagar has the center of administration and is the main hub for policy decisions. Gibb City is the main center of economy to, as of today. Uh, if you go to any of these three cities, then you are the, or you're only 30 minutes away uh, from the past, present, and the future. From the airport, you can reach Gibb City or any of these places within 30 minutes. Uh, uh, as Mr. Prasad mentioned in his opening, India is uh, Indian economy is poised for growth uh, at seven percent and is among the fastest growing economy. Clearly, and the idea of Gift City is, therefore is not limited to just uh, business, trade, economy, economic activities only. The vision of Gift City, I think, is it's associated the it's associated with the future of uh, India. 
uh, altogether. That's what I would really put it. Uh, all the initiatives which are, uh, are taken by the government are towards ease of doing business, ease of living. And uh, in that way, Gift City is emerging as the place where new ideas uh, are emerging, wealth creation is happening, and the best of the minds are actually coming to here to learn and grow. Right? Uh, in 21st century today, finance and technology, they go hand in hand. And clearly, India has an edge uh, and experience in this field. Uh, so today, if you look at uh, data, almost 40% of the world's uh, real-time digital payments uh, belongs to India alone. Mr. Prasad also mentioned about uh, the digital economy. I mean, we we have we will become almost one trillion uh, by 2025. So this is the power of uh, India in uh, fintech world is clearly uh, attracting the whole world. And uh, Gift City is emerging as a fintech uh, laboratory, fintech's uh, global lab laboratory. I would say. Uh, Ifska is of course uh, 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 doing a lot. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Asatosh mentioned about the DNA. Clearly, I agree with that. Uh, there are a number of uh, regulations uh, which uh, uh, Ifska is working on, which is making the overall operation uh, cost effective. And in India, is uh, matching up to say other financial hubs like uh, Dubai and Singapore. Uh, uh, specifically coming to the opportunity, specifically coming to your question about uh, uh, what, uh, how uh, venture capital funds based uh, in, say, Silicon Valley can utilize uh, the Gift City framework, right? See, uh, firstly, uh, as Asutosh ji mentioned, uh, IFSCA has issued a very progressive fund management regulation. Uh, this regulation is benchmarked to global standards. Uh, there has been a conscious attempt to move away from the traditional India template. So firstly, when you see at the regulations, you would see that the fund manager is, is a fund manager who is sought to be regulated and not the fund. So in, in the traditional model, you have the fund which is regulated, not the fund manager. right? Uh, as far as the, the fund managers are concerned, they can actually take, uh, uh, there are three types of licenses which are available. You have an authorized fund management license, you have a non-retail fund management and a retail fund management. So all of these are based on risk-based approach, depending upon who the in end investor is uh, and whom you want to really serve, you can appropriately take those, those licenses. So obviously, if you are working with uh, uh, venture capital funds, then the, the, the fund manager will just take authorized uh, fund management license. But if he's working with uh, or if his investor base is going to be, say, retail investors, he would take that license. Clearly, the uh, regulations are also light touch. Uh, as an authorized fund manager, you can actually pool money from accredited investors, uh, which invest in early startups uh, so or early stage ventures. Uh, it, it can through it, this investment can happen through venture capital schemes. Uh, venture capital schemes can actually be launched uh, under a green channel. That is, that means as soon as you file the scheme with the authority, you it's open for subscription, so you don't need to wait for approvals at all. Uh, as far as, far as uh, say angel funds are concerned, you can launch the angel fund within with a small corpus of just $1 million. You don't need a very large corpus. If you're doing a venture capital fund, you just need a $5 million corpus to, to launch it. Uh, regulations uh, also permit uh, that venture capital, capital fund can actually seek uh, leverage. Uh, this is very, very uh, uh, unique uh, to Gift City. You don't have this concept in the mainland India. Uh, it also permits you to make co-investments through segregated portfolio or through SPVs. Uh, there is a wonderful or a very conducive tax regime, I would say, for specified funds. Uh, as far as uh, uh, regulation again is concerned, which is a departure from the mainland, is that sponsor contribution. It's, you know, it's not mandatory to have sponsor contribution. You can actually move away. I mean, if the almost two third, if two third percent of the investors actually contribute agree then the sponsor contribution can actually uh, be waived off. So, so clearly a uh, very good uh, fund regime. Apart from a uh, fund regime, you also have a fintech framework, which is available. Uh, the framework uh, is aimed at giving a boost to, uh, uh, boost, boost to establishment of the world-class fintech hub at Gift City. Uh, this uh, framework talks about direct authorization of fintechs as well as tech fins. Uh, as far as these entities which are set up here, they can provide the fintech entities. They can, if they are providing solutions which are which results in new business model, say application process or products, in in and it has to be in financial services, then they can actually set up. 
uh, even tech fins are uh, enabled if you are an it company and you are providing services to a uh, 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 financial services companies they can also come and set up a presence uh, lastly from a, a professional standpoint uh, there is an ancillary service framework which is available. Uh, uh, there are these en entities which are set up, so chartered accountants, uh, law firms, uh, 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 management consultants, they all can actually come and set up presence here in Gift City. And uh, they will also be entitled to the 10 year tax holiday. Yeah, so from, from that perspective, uh, there is a lot uh, which is on offer. And I think the more we explore this, the more opportunities will really emerge. Thank you. Thank you, Suresh, uh, for this uh, wonderful reply. I really like, uh, you know, the three city description that you gave, you know, the past, the present, and the future. Uh, that's, you know, I think it aptly describes what Gip City is and where it is right now. I also like the fund structure um, uh, explanation that you gave about the various options. Um, I think it merits a workshop session with some of our uh, members who are working with uh, various funds as CFOs and accountants, and we take that offline at a separate stage. But I'll pause here and I'll give the opportunity to Aditya to respond as well. Thank you, Aditya, for accepting that invite. Thank you, Nilesh. Uh, thank you, uh, Council General and uh, ICI San Francisco chapter to invite and have me here. Uh, I think uh, I completely uh, share my thoughts as Suresh mentioned and probably would like to add on just a couple of them. Uh, if you look at the way the government of India as well as uh, government of Gujarat and the regulators are trying to create uh, a conducive environment to enable ease of doing business, to come set up, operate, invest in India. I think that's, that is a segue or a gateway to say tax cannot be left far behind. And as Suresh just very briefly alluded, I think there is a very favorable tax regime overall for setups in, uh, in the Gip City. And uh, from my perspective, I would say it's just not FinTech or FS or financial services is what uh, Gip City is all about. You look at the ambit that Gift City is opened up with. Uh, you have new emerging areas or segments like uh, Ashutosh and uh, Sandeepji alluded to very briefly around aircraft leasing, ship leasing, uh, global captives or in-house services. That's a very big segment uh, if you look at it. So uh, it's just not financial services, but these ancillary support and emerging activities are things which is uh, uh, is, is pretty interesting from a Gift City perspective. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Aditya. And as you rightly said, you know, anything uh, tax cannot be behind, and uh, we are lucky the tax regime is much more positive. I'll jump back uh, to Sandeep and Ashtosh. One of the key concerns that we've heard is the skill development and talent availability. Um, you know, I am from India, I grew up there, so I kind of understand what's happening there. But many people here may not know uh, what's the scene about skill development, training, universities, and all of that. So I'd like uh, both of you to take a jab at that. Uh, maybe something you can start, and then Ashutosh on this theme of skill and talent. Sure, thanks. I think, uh, you know, talent is, as you rightly mentioned, it's very key component basically for financial services center and uh, you know, and that's where government of gujarat has taken very uh, uh, important step basically to address the talent part in more from a short term medium term and long term perspective what uh, uh, what happened uh, you know few years back government of gujarat has created knowledge corridor which is just next to the gip city and it houses very well known well well recognized academic institutes in the stream of engineering uh, you know it management law iit gandhinagar is just three kilometers from uh, gip city and i'm sure you know i am amdavad is part of uh, the amdavad city so i think that foundation which has been created more from the academic institutions uh, you know that that is playing very important role to ensure that the right kind of talent talent required for the it uh, sector or for the financial sector, those are available in the vicinity of the Gip City. The 
second uh, 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 initiative that gip city has taken we have tied up with the academic institutes across india where we are, we are promoting them to launch the programs or courses on the ifsc related subjects and and that's where you know many of these institutes have already started uh, uh, launching their ifsc programs as a part of their existing curriculum or many of them have also launched ifsc as a separate subject in in some of the programs so i think that is also ensuring that the talent coming out from those management schools or from the finance financial domains they the students will be aware about the emerging areas in the ifsc business activities and the third which is a very long term objective uh, under which we are working right now with the asian development bank where we are creating international fintech institute uh, which will be housed at gip city it's it's a 100 million dollar project uh, which we are working right now with uh, adb and this institute is going to basically house the uh, but uh, the training part of the fintech where it will tie up with the right kind of institutions to provide the fintech related programs uh, with the industry engagements the second pillar that the institute is going to have is the incubation and acceleration so the you know it will actually promote the startup ecosystem where the accelerators will help them to move to the next level and the third pillar is on the global research center so the institute is also going to have a research arm which will also focus on the emerging uh, uh so research on the emerging technologies globally so i think with this three pieces we are uh, ensuring that the you know right kind of talent is available for some of these emerging areas that we are developing at gip city yeah thanks. Uh, anything you want to add ashok yeah i think i just dissect across the industries which are in ifsc uh, on one side you have the core financial industries you have banks funds uh, you have insurance companies uh, and if you see gujarat i think gujarat is uh, second biggest producer of cas in india so it's a center of financial uh, service providers so far what has been happening is all these service provider were uh, going either to mumbai for the core financial industry or up north and down south this uh, uh, center is giving the opportunity for all of the uh, gujarat uh, original resident to come back into the city and the new talent is also available but the second industry that we are looking at uh, is uh, when you think of uh, again when you think of gift fsc the way we are thinking about it is that one is core financial industries but if you want to develop international financial center you need to have a much larger city ecosystem uh you know the kind of infrastructure that you see in singapore hong kong and all those big financial center which requires a different scale and that is one of the purpose why global capability centers or global in house centers have been enabled in gift ifsc now this industry employs significant number of uh, people in india more than 1.39 million people are employed by this uh, more than 1500 gccs in india that talent requires a tech talent it's a later level at uh, entry level if you look at we studied the industry we looked at the central belt of india the western belt of india rajasthan mp gujarat all of them they have been exporting this talent either to north south or out of india now that talent is available at the captive uh, for these uh, technology centers in the city but lot of it companies are uh, also available within gift city so gift city has two part domestic zone and ifsc zone if you look at the domestic zone it has bank of baroda which has back office almost 3000 employee it has ibm which is doing ai ml work with more than 300 employees you have state bank of india moving the regional center with thousands of employee i think the talent uh, probably once we apply ourselves it's a notion is there but once we apply and we are engaging with lot of industry people we are trying to handle them i think uh, talent someone has to apply and then self go to the second and third level uh, my perspective my experience with bank of america coming into gift fsc with a scope of 800 staff for their gcc and they have now ramped up to 2600 people within one and a half year even on tax side i don't see uh, talent a challenge yeah, that's that's really assuring to your overall perspective I have some more questions uh, for the panel, but I think I'll pause here and see if anybody in the audience has any questions uh, that they would like to pose to the panel. Anyone? 
Yes. Yeah, I think there is a question. Yeah, thank you for uh, hosting this event. Uh, I just wanted to get a perspective of sort of how big is the amount of capital that flows through Gip City today, and uh, how does it compare to what goes say between Singapore and India and Dubai and India, just at a high level? And and what do you envision this could be like about five years out or something? Okay, uh, can I take that one? Yes, yeah. okay. so, uh, capital flow, uh, let's measure in specific uh, verticals. Uh, today, uh, if you see India derivatives, dollar and our derivatives, uh, that is again, it went outside India. It is uh, market volume was almost uh, $60 billion uh, happening daily. It's happening not only in Singapore, but it's happening in London market. Is London is the main market happening at the centers as well. We started this almost one and a half year back. This uh, we still don't have uh, uh, more than uh, four or five banks which are working in this uh, space right now. We have twenty three banks, out of which nineteen banks are operational. Four or five banks are mainly focusing on dollar and our uh, trades. We have a daily volume of two billion dollars out of sixty billion dollars. But uh, global banks like JP, City, uh, Barclays, they are bringing this markets business into IFSC. But presence and trading in IFSC has already resulted in convergence of onshore and offshore pricing. So that is the volume. If you look at banks within IFSC, today their uh, total assets is in the range of uh, 36 to $38 billion. Uh, this is dated by a quarter. This was $14 billion uh, two years back. If you compare Indian related assets in Dubai uh, is uh, $180 billion. Now, all the Indian banks in uh, globally, where who have global presence, they have uh, more or less, uh, as per our understanding, has a strategy that they will book all Indian related business incrementally only from IFSC. If you see some of the MNC bank, MUFG bank is a Japanese bank. Uh, it has an India exposure of say around uh, 10 to 12 billion dollars to my understanding. They established in gift IFSC in August last year, which is around five, six months back. They have already scaled up their book within IFSC to 2 billion dollars, which 20% of their global India related balance sheet is within Gift City. HSBC Bank, which established two years back, their IFSC balance sheet is around 3.5 billion dollars, which they say is around 22. 25% of their India balance sheet, which they have established in last 150 years. So these are early shoots, but uh, this tells you the volume, the trading that is happening here. And it's just a start. It's a trajectory and it's a more exponential rather than linear. It's going in that direction. I hope that addresses your question. And just to add to it, um, I think the capital flows through the alternative investment funds is also you know uh, uh, increasing rapidly and today in so if you if you look at the last 6 months number the funds in give city have actually got commitment of more than 10 billion dollar for investment in india and i think you all of you know that india centric funds were generally structured in some of the other centers because of the you know various reasons now what we have been seeing the trends that if the objective and intention is to invest in India, now these such offshore funds are structuring their funds in IFSC because it provides the similar regulatory regime, similar taxation regime. And at the same time, the cost of operation is one fourth of what they generally incur in some of the other centers. So I think uh, at least we have seen that the India centric funds have now started uh, um, uh, stru getting structured in gift and also the migration have also started happening. I think it's not only funds, but if you see any industry that has been relying on the DTA shopping in a way, they are getting an opportunity to see a very credible tax regime provided by government of India. And they are shifting uh, across the industry to IFSC. Thank you, Sandeep and uh, Sutosh. Uh, I have a question from Monishi. Uh, uh, what is the question from there? So let me get this side. 
So I'm Monish Sanyal from IIT Madras and I'm the founder of IIT Startups. Now in Silicon Valley, the key ingredients for a successful startup ecosystem are one, the number of startups, people who are buzzing with ideas, want to do something. Number two is the mentor accelerator incubation ecosystem. And the third most important thing is risk capital. And I'm talking about risk capital. People like angel financiers and venture capitalists, where one out of 10 or one out of many will succeed. The risks are extremely high, but the returns are extremely high. Now, I grant you that India's startups are not the true tech startups that we have in Silicon Valley. They are more digital commerce kind of uh, startups where the risk is mitigated somewhat, you know, there's less risk. So what is your ecosystem for venture capitalists and angels in Gujarat? I'm not talking about banks. Banks don't play these risky games. I'm talking about VCs and, uh, and uh, angel finances. Suresh, you want to take this first? Yeah, who wants to take this? Yeah, so maybe Sandeep, uh, you'll, you'll maybe you can give the ecosystem part and then I'll come on the tax bit. Sure. No, I think, uh, you know, you uh, rightly voiced the question that it is very important for the venture fund ecosystem. I mean, the, for the startup ecosystem, the availability of the right kind of players from the venture funds to the uh, you know, available funding mechanism is very much important. I think a uh, couple of initiatives have been taken to ensure that the uh, startup ecosystem grows from the financial center. Number one, the if you look at the fintech framework, uh, you know, which has been uh, uh, provided by the regulator, it talks about uh, not only fintech, but also the agri-tech, health tech, space tech, and you know wherever there is a financial services angle it has been captured under the fintech as a framework and that's where it will ensure that the startups will get a platform to access the international markets through the ifsc framework and also the offshore startups who are looking to enter india they will also get a very easy access through a two ways one a sandbox regime has been enabled and the second, they, if the product is matured enough, they can actually be in the direct authorization under the regulations. Now, coming back to the your, your core questions about the uh, availability of ecosystem for the venture fund uh, players. So that's where uh, a, a very recent framework, you know, which is a very uh, globally benchmark framework, fund management entity framework. It has now enabled uh, 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 venture funds to be set up in IFSC. And it has been given a kind of a very liberal regime, regulatory as well as tax regime compared to the other more regulated funds. And that's how, you know, we have already seen uh, 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 a kind of venture funds which have already established today in IFSC. And if you look at the flexibilities which have been given to them, one, they can actually easily invest in India, basically, without any restrictions. They can also invest in the international markets without any restrictions. And top up to it, the foreign investors that the venture funds will receive, basically, the foreign investment that they will receive, the foreign investors will not have to register with the income tax authority in India, and they will not have to file return in India. And that's where it will also give very much easy access for to the foreign investors to invest into those venture fund funds also gujarat government has also set up you know the gujarat venture capital fund it's a sovereign fund of the state government where the venture fund has been established which can also be utilized for providing uh, funding to the startups uh, which, which are getting established in game so i think right kind of initiatives have been taken but I, i'll not say that it has matured today it is still evolving and probably the right steps have been taken to ensure that it reaches to a, a, a desired level. Uh, so resort to you. Yeah, th thanks, uh, Sandeep. And uh, uh, there's also a fintech university, as, as you mentioned, right? Uh, uh, that is also in the process of being set up, uh, which will actually help uh, uh, creation of this talent. 
uh, as far as the uh, tax regime, you already touched upon Sandeep, as far as the tax regime is concerned, very progressive tax regime where these entities can actually get a, a pass-through treatment whereby uh, you're not subject to tax in India, the funds are not subject to tax in India. Uh, you look at the end investor and based on the end investor's profile, you pay that, that amount of tax. Uh, but uh, as far as compliance is concerned, no compliance from the investor standpoint. And that's uh, probably a big relief uh, uh, overall. Um, yeah, I, I hope that answers your question. Um, uh, but if there are any other follow-up questions, happy to take them. Uh, just, just, uh, just to quickly add on to what Sandeep said, uh, from a venture capital fund, from a fund management entity perspective, as uh, it was alluded to, there's also uh, they do what's called pay GSC on their fund management. Terms. So the overall operational cost also comes down. Secondly, there's a very good startup ecosystem from a tax perspective in India. Uh, they enjoy tax holiday benefits, investments into certain eligible startups uh, are outside the ambit of aging tax so and so forth. So I think you have, if you can look at it more consolidating, uh, give city plus the startup tax regime plus the good framework, I think it's it's evolving, it's moving in towards the right direction. Uh, you know, I think uh, you're talking about taxation, which there are some flaws there, and I think uh, we raised it with the minister of well I am not able to articulate that properly, so I'm not going to talk about that. But I'm talking about the investors, where the risk takers, you know, the risk is here. They're not owned by a state, they're not the same. Taxation will all come as a policy. Who are the people who are going to take the risk? Where are those people? Are they there in Gujarat? Are they there in the city? That's what I'm asking. Can you repeat the last line? You know, do you have private investors like firms like VC firms, you know, uh, like they have your client projects and uh, you know, all the you know, the big uh, firms out here and small ones also who borrow money from limited partners and then it is their job to invest and on the overall investment, maybe your 10 companies, eight of them. Uh, fail and like two of them succeed, but they give enough return back to the, uh, to the limited partners to be profitable. So the people who take the risk over there are the VCs. Do you have a VC ecosystem? I'm not talking about banks. I'm not talking about regulations. I'm talking about risk takers. Yep. You know, the question, Your question is quite clear. You're talking about the risk capital that VCs are deploying. So let me put it this way. See, I, I think uh, your opening statement when you earlier said that uh, India is more e-commerce company, your view, but as I see today, and uh, is that India is third largest startup ecosystem, right? Uh, with 115 unicorns today, they have raised $45 billion of funds, which means that venture capitalist ecosystem is developed in India at least. You need not look into Gift City as a Gujarat. Gift City is not a Gujarat project. Gift City is an India project, it's a national project. It's an offshore from FEMA uh, project, right? So it's like VCs in India today, they were having the vehicles established in Singapore, Mauritius because of tax efficiency and whatever reasons they're doing that. Now, same vehicles of our same VCs, you're talking about the angel investor, three largest angel uh, funds in India, they have applied for license in IFSC. One of the significant VCs in India, Indian fund manager entities, they've already applied license in IFSC. We have interest from uh, 80 fund manager entities today, all fund managers. They have LPs, and you're talking about who are investing into these, the like of Ardia, the likes of IFC, Tamasek, the institutional investor as well as non-institutional investors. They have already invested into these funds. We have a commitment of $15 billion capital into these funds in IFSC. These funds, they had that approach. In today, we see ecosystem, you're looking at that as well as equity. You have that approach, you have equity approach. So while these are initial, this framework is only, I think, uh, one year old. A lot of clarifications have come out uh, gradually over the period. We have VC's ecosystem developing into IFSC. Our regulation required that the principal officer for this VC, which is establishing an IFSC, has to be within the IFSC ecosystem. So you have the decision makers into uh, sitting in gift IFSC as they develop. 
So the ecosystem is developing, but see, you have to think it very differently. Their fintech ecosystem, there's a VC ecosystem. On fintech ecosystem, IFSCA is the only financial regulator, at least in this part of the world, which has come out with a fintech framework aimed at them. Within that, we are the only regulator in India, at least, which has come out with a grant scheme. And when we look at grant scheme, we have come out grant scheme not only at the fintech level, we have come out grant scheme even for the accelerators. So what we are looking at and what is our approach in IFSCA is always an ecosystem approach. When we look at aircraft, we look at, can we bring aircraft? Can you bring ground service equipment? Can we bring the trainers? Why Indian pilots are going outside for training? When we look at fintech ecosystem, we are not seeing only why fintechs are outside. We are seeing fintechs are flipping the companies outside, holding company level. How we can bring that holding company back into IFSC? Uh, day for yesterday, we uh, have instituted a committee entirely focusing under the deputy governor of uh, X, deputy governor of Reserve Bank of India, entirely focusing on how can we bring the startups which are going outside of India, even for holding company by flipped structure, back into gift IFSC. It's a very focused approach, looking at entire ecosystem. We look at angel, we are looking at VCs, we are looking at PEs. We are looking at uh, fintech themselves. We are looking at the holding companies of fintech. But yes, I agree. Silicon Valley has been there forever. We are at a startup journey ourselves. It's one year old. Fintech framework is uh, less than one year old. But we are, already we have, uh, I think, 50 fintechs into our ecosystem. IFSC is the only regulator globally which has signed the MOU with uh, MAS. And as per this MOU with MAS and the Deputy Prime Minister, we said the gift have to sign it. A startup anywhere globally, FinTech, they can enter into sandbox of IFSC as well as MAS at the same time. It's a unified regulator. The way we have created for with the Indian domestic regulator, we have created with MAS also. We are doing similar initiative with Israel. We are doing with other countries as well. This ecosystem is developing. And as I said, we are looking at the entire ecosystem. We are not looking at FinTech. We are also looking at how we can collaborate with the regulators at the same time, what is required for the VCs to come here. The accelerators, as Sandeep Bhai mentioned, accelerators are also coming here. Within the grant scheme, accelerators are being enabled. We have signed, uh, if you have, if you know, T-Hub, which is, uh, you know, in Telangana, we have signed MOU with them. They're also plugged into the IFSC ecosystem. Uh, I think India is a very uh, vibrant ecosystem when it comes to startups and fintechs. And IFSC is going to play a key role in integrating all this uh, ecosystem within India. Thank you, Ashutosh, for this. Sometimes I speak with uh, passion, but take it that it comes from the heart of the work that we are doing here. Thank you so much. Uh, I think we are running out of time because we, unfortunately, because of technical problems, so I am going to compare it to close the panel at this stage. But before I do that, I want to give 30 seconds to all the panelists for closing remarks. Um, you can start, Sandeep, and then Ashutosh. Creation and finally, Aditya for closing remarks, and then we close out the panel. No, I think our last 30 message for 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 all of you is that uh, India has now opened up uh, from for the financial services players to access India very easily, and uh, with a unified regulatory approach in a true single window, uh, you know, kind of a mechanism. So we invite all of you to experience and uh, you know be a part of the growth journey at uh, Gibbs City IFSC and uh, we'll be happy to facilitate and uh, provide all the required support for you to be a part of this journey. Thank you. Thank you, Sandeep. Over to you, I suppose. I think uh, uh, CA network, ICA network, VC network in US from Indian origin uh, is very, very strong. We encourage you uh, to take learnings from this uh, discussion. And please come back with positive uh, or constructive, whatever feedback you want to bring in. Tell us what more needs to be done. And feel free to engage with the customers, your potential clients who want to invest into IFSC. And if you have any query, you can take our coordinates with the organizers. We are very open, very collaborative, and uh, we will engage you even at the transaction level as well as at the uh, philosophical level or the overall level. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Ashutosh. Uh, over to you, Suresh. No yeah, thanks. Yeah. So I think uh, just one message that uh, whenever you are looking at cross-border flows, uh, you have to uh, now keep uh, uh, 
uh, uh, keep I, IFSC and Gift City in mind. And any transactions uh, uh, which which happen with India cross border, Gift City is the gateway to India, be it inbound or outbound. So whenever you are dealing with your clients and whenever you are dealing with these transactions, please do keep Gift City in mind and see how you can actually uh, take advantage of the uh, various uh, benefits which are offered here. Thank you. Thank you, Suresh. Hope you are there for your closing remarks. Thanks, Suresh. I think, uh, in a summary, in a quick nutshell, Gift City's framework is now comparable to the likes of Mauritius in Singapore. Uh, I think with the additional advantage of uh, low cost of operations, just sheer uh, abundance of talent in India. I think uh, these, along with the government's approach of four Cs, the clear, concise, ensuring competitiveness, and giving certainty. I think this is a, a great move from the government's perspective. Uh, practically speaking, we have seen our clients talk about the city in broad key spaces. One is from a financial services perspective. Second is to set up global in-house capital centers. Third, for venture capitals and pre funds, we also see people trying to do outsourcing to India and city with the likes of doing tech function, doing the uh, governance, finance and accounting, uh, investor portfolio management services. So a very wide area of uh, uh, service offering that is there in the city and very relevant for people with Silicon Valley, especially with the framework that we have around VCs, funds and the startup ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you to all the panelists. Uh, I'd like to close out with an open invitation to all of you who are in India. Uh, if you ever happen to be in Silicon Valley, do let us know. Uh, our chapter members will be more than happy to interact with you. And if you're planning an event or a trip here with a focus on promoting Big City, do give us advance notice. We'd love to, you know, sort of help out in whatever way we can to leverage our network to support uh, you know, spreading the message. With this, I'll, I'll thank all of you in India who've woken up early. And I'll thank all the people here who have, you know, come here and be patient with us. I'd like to request our chairperson, uh, Sudha Michaels, to propose a word of thanks at this stage. Sudha, so over to you. Thank you, Nilesh. Well, that was a great, great uh, session. And uh, first, I want to thank the CG for bringing it to us. and. The Institute of Chartered Accounts and San Francisco Chapter is very happy to host this. We just realized that this is just the tip of the iceberg. We just uh, heard so much from you about the vision. We heard about uh, the regulations, the oper operationalization of that, the tax, but so much more to hear and so much more to discuss. And uh, as of course, we do hear your call that uh, the CA chapter is uh, here in the US. And Silicon Valley and the, and the ecosystem here um, should be working with you. Uh, we also have the heart and we will do our best uh, to enable that for you and uh, you know, we work with you. So uh, we close this. We want to thank all of you here. Uh, you came on the rainy day and uh, you know, it was a great session. Uh, we finally want to thank all of our sponsors, the sponsors uh, of our chapter are the ones that enable us to bring these uh, so we just want to take uh, two minutes, and this is uh, an event where we want to recognize our sponsors. So we want to recognize the ones that are there in this room. We just want to give you a clap, a token of acknowledgement. So 